regime change is coming, to Kiev. Zelensky may soon be forced out on account of the bloody battle loss at Avajivka. By Stephen Bryan, February 20, 2024. Washington has fondly hoped that it could bring about regime change in Russia. Now it seems even more likely that there will be regime change, but not in Russia, in Kiev. The catalyst for regime change in Kiev is the bloody and now ended battle over Avajivka. Avajivka is very close to Donetsk city, the capital area of the Donbas region. Donetsk is about halfway between Mariupol on the Sea of Asov and Luhansk in the north. Both Donetsk and Luhansk are regions, oblasts, in eastern Ukraine with mostly Russian-speaking populations. Both Donetsk and Luhansk, along with Kherson and Zaporizhia, were annexed by the Russians in September 2022. The recent battle over Avajivka began four months ago, and from January the Russians began wearing down the Ukrainian defenders of the city. The Russian operation included attacks from the north, some of which focused on a huge coke-making plant, and from the south in multiple thrusts on the city's flanks. By the end of the first week of February, the Russian armed forces had cut the city in two and were steadily advancing while pounding the city with artillery and fab bombs. These are high explosive bombs of different sizes, Fab 500, Fab 1500, the number is the bomb size in kilograms. Avajivka was highly fortified and a difficult target for the Russian army. The Russians focused on flank attacks that eventually squeezed off the resupply of weapons and food, and made the rotation of forces difficult. By the last week of the battle the roads in and out of the city were under Russian fire control. President Volodymyr Zelensky staked his reputation on Avajivka, and wanted it held at all costs. He fired his overall commander Valery Zalyushny, who saw Avajivka as a lost cause. Zalyushny wanted to pull Ukrainian forces back from the existing line of contact and move them into defensible fortifications that could protect Kiev and other important cities. Enter Sierski, who had been ground commander under Zalyushny and was now put in charge of all Ukrainian military forces. Sierski is the same guy whose tactics led to the collapse of Bukhmut and very heavy casualties, earning that city the name Meat Grinder. Sierski immediately called up three or four brigades to save Avajivka from collapse. But his planned rescue operation almost immediately got into serious trouble. Some of Sierski's brigades were being assembled and organized in a small town around 15 kilometers from Avajivka, called Salaidov. The Russians discovered the Ukrainian army operations in Salaidov and attacked with Askonda missiles and cluster weapons. According to Russian sources blogging on various media networks, Telegram and X, for example, the Russian attack all but wiped out an entire brigade with heavy Ukrainian casualties. Ukraine's propaganda mill went into high gear, alleging that the Russian attack was aimed at a hospital's maternity ward in Salaidov. But the reality was that Ukraine lost around 1,000 to 1,500 soldiers. Most Western news sources parroted the Ukrainian line. Zelensky was on his way to the Munich Security Conference, where he got a standing ovation. Before he left Kiev he ordered Sierski to stop the Russians from taking Avajivka. Sierski committed the 3rd Brigade to the fight for the city. The 3rd Separate Assault Brigade in reality is the reformed Asov Brigade. The Asov Brigade is the backbone of Zelensky's ultranationalist support in Ukraine. If any organization in Ukraine fits Putin's description of Ukrainian Nazis, the 3rd Brigade is the premier example. Zelensky's political power depends on the Ukrainian military, and in particular the ultranationalists. The 3rd Brigade did not perform as advertised. When its units got into Avajivka, coming in from the north, they found the situation dire. By that time there were around 4,500 Ukrainian soldiers in the northern parts of the city, mostly holed up in the coke plant. Another 3,500 were in the center of the city verging on the southern town's districts and an old abandoned airfield. The 3rd Brigade disobeyed orders and ran out of the town, countermanding Sierski and Zelensky's explicit orders. 
Above all, Zelensky did not want to get embarrassed while he was at the Munich conference exactly while he was running around trying to get more ammunition. Some from the 3rd Brigade surrendered to the Russians. This is what triggered Sierski to signal a retreat and abandon Avajivka. That retreat was a significant blow to Zelensky's prestige and, apparently, there were angry phone calls from Munich to Sierski. But Sierski had little choice, other than to openly surrender. Instead, he announced a new strategy, precisely what Zalushny had previously recommended. The loss of Avajivka leaves Zelensky in a bad situation. He has all but lost his most ardent supporters in the army, has humiliated his former commander Zalushny, and replaced him with Sierski who has a reputation as a loser. He has lost face with the Europeans, and probably with the United States, although it is hard to tell for sure. Zelensky counters by saying Ukraine will get Avajivka back, absolutely. Washington does not want to deal with the Russians. All of its focus has been on handing Russia multiple defeats, squeezing the Russians dry, and replacing the country's leader, Putin. Biden's team also can't stomach the idea that the Ukrainians might make a deal with Russia, and undermine the policy. Most of the central elements of Washington's policy have failed. Excessive sanctions did not break the Russian economy but succeeded in driving the Russians in a wholly new direction, embracing China, India, and BRICS. US technology did not turn the tide of war in Ukraine's favor. Not talking to the Russians helped solidify the Russian view that Washington and NATO were the enemy, intensifying their already stressed view that they had been lied to over the years about NATO expansion. While the US and Europe either could not or would not revitalize their defense industrial base, the Russians did so with a vengeance. Meanwhile, the US and Europe are standing by for the war to end and hundreds of billions to be sunk into rebuilding Ukraine, which is less and less likely to happen under US and European auspices. The bottom line is that Zelensky's regime is tottering. Because of Zelensky's martial law-based regime, there will be no elections and no open political process. But anger in the army is growing, and sooner or later the military will choose a leader, most likely Zalushny. There will be a regime change in Kiev, coming soon. Stephen Bryan served as staff director of the Near East Subcommittee of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and as a deputy undersecretary of Defense for Policy. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media App and BarGlobal.net. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. It does help support our productions. Also, Please download the BG Media app to access the best works of the world's authors rendered in audiobooks, along with great experience through music, podcasts, and vodcasts.